From Colorado Public Radio, this is Terra Firma. Hello, friends. I'm C. Marie Furman. Each episode of Terra Firma brings part of the natural world to life with a new insight to take with you. Come with me on this journey. This time to the edge of the Payette River in west central Idaho. We are the loudest creatures in these autumn woods. The four of us, two humans and two dogs, move through hip-high brush, jump over downed trees, and break dry branches to reach the north fork of the Payette River's edge. We have come in hopes of seeing the kokanee salmon that return here each fall. It never fails. I gasp at the first glimpse of a neon red tail. The once merely gray stone river bottom glows with a hundred bright red summer sunsets. And because the females are busy cleaning moss and sediment from the cobble and the males are distracted with fighting each other, they don't care about these four sets of eyes that have found them or the closeness of our bodies to the river. Above us, the seraphim winged are wary. The bald eagle complains about our intrusion and casts disapproving glances. We promise to leave soon. Maybe it's because I'm so moved by this scene that I feel the need to kneel and then lie down by the river's edge. Now, Almost at eye level with the salmon, the water nearly translucent, I feel I am witnessing a miracle. Miracle. I've been using that word so much lately that I'm worried its meaning will start to fade. Yet, I don't know another to describe how I feel when I see these kokanee. And perhaps that is why I, too, return. To reaffirm the meaning of the word by witnessing the ephemeral in the river before me. Here, on the north fork of the Payette River, miracle means death and life exist in the same moment. And not just any life and death, but the singular life and death of a completely different species, a being whose color and body changed for this moment. They abandoned their home in Payette Lake's deep water, stopped eating, grew a hump, a bigger jowl, and deadly teeth. They will spend their final days creating a home for thousands of offspring, spreading their eggs or milt, and then they will quietly die. And as quickly as it began, it will be over. I take one long last look, and just before I rise to leave, I notice a male swim to the side of a female and both begin to pulse as if there is a current passing between them. I want to reach into the water and beg some of their spirit to enter me as well, but I fear my human body could not translate their kokanee language and have only words to offer them in return. These are moments when speech is too much and language must become inferred, an inaudible sensation, a vibration. We don't stay long. We know that this is a vulnerable time for kokanee. 
And even though they don't seem to notice us, our presence is not part of their ritual. And in the woods beyond, there are others waiting with their own autumn rites. Our leaving is quiet. Our steps are carefully placed. Witnessing of this kind creates a stillness in us that we savor. While my partner drives us home, I lean my head against the window and see the red leaves of huckleberry and dogwood. I see clutches of bright orange mountain ash berries, fireweed, and a red sun setting in a smoky gray sky. Something moves through me. Suddenly, kokanee are everywhere on the landscape. Everywhere. Like miracles. This field recording was gathered by Jacob Job. I'm Seamarie Furman. Terra Firma is a production of Colorado Public Radio.